relationship. And uh, so I'm in the process of calling and reaching out to people that the Lord may have increased in his kingdom and that he may be glorified. And so there's no backup plan. I'm going to run this to the end. And uh, I hope you have an expectation like I do that some lives will be changed and that some are going to come to know who Jesus is. Some of those who have been broken with their fellowship will come back to fellowship and walk in the purpose and the will of God, glorifying God. Amen? Amen. Isn't it good to know that God is for us? Yes. The Bible says, if God be for you, who can be against you? So I'm excited, and uh, let me get let me get started. We we didn't really have a schedule today, so it don't take me long to get to mine. So, so, so uh, I hope you're excited. Let me open with another word of prayer. Heavenly Father, once again, I thank you for who you are, for what you're doing, for what you've done, and for what you will do. Lord, I come before you today, seeking your ways, your righteousness, and your truth. I come before you today, asking for mercy, forgiveness. Come to me today and ask that we be made whole. Ask for your understanding. Ask for your peace, your protection, your mercy. Ask that we learn love and unity, kindness and mercy. Ask that we be strengthened and encouraged that we might go forth glorifying you in all that we say and do. Lord, let us not leave here the same way we came in. Let today's message be life-changing. Let it draw someone closer to you. Let it cause someone to call someone to restore a fellowship. I ask these things in the name of Jesus. To the glory of the Lord, let it be well, let it be so. In Jesus' name, the church says, Amen. 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 You know what? Uh, the name of my message today is, Who Have You Invited to Church Lately? Uh-oh. <laughs> Here in the Bible, in the Gospel of Matthew, uh, uh, chapter 28, beginning at verse 18, this is the great commission that the Lord gave to 11 of his apostles. Uh, uh, this, the reason why it was 11, because it's minus Judas Iscariot, he had killed himself. But here, at verse 18, it reads as follows, it says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore... He gave them three things to do, to teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, which is the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe uh, all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world or the end of the age. What he was telling them to do was to be a witness on his behalf. And why do we need to tell people to be a witness on his behalf? Because we need people to come to Jesus, and because in doing so, God is glorified. So one thing that I, I see that's a weakness in the church, and most of you that's aware of this will surely agree with me. For the most part, uh, Christians do not go out to witness for Christ. I believe the, the average is 5%, and it's not consistent. Out of that 5%, only 2% do it on a consistent basis, and out of that 2%, the rate of, uh, I would say, a person coming to the Lord is still low. So as I was toiling ways to, to uh, bring people to fellowship or to church, uh, something just told me, why don't you just invite some people? And so I, I'm reminded of a of the uh, part in the Bible when he sent them out, he empowered them to go out to cast out demons and to heal all manner of sicknesses and to lay hands on the sick and restore sight to the blind. And he told them when they first went on a journey not to go in the way of the Samaritans, which were the Gentiles. But later on in the Gospel of John, he said that it was going to be another sheep that was in this fold and they would be included, and there'd be one shepherd and one fold. What he was talking about was the Gentiles was going to be included in the promises of God, as well as the children of Israel. And it was going to be it was going to be done without any uh, separation. 
So in other words, because you was a Jew and you heard first, you didn't have a greater value. I want you to know today in my, my message dealing with disciples, just because someone was saved first or came to the Lord first doesn't mean that they have a greater value. Uh, I'm, I'm reminded of a story in the Bible about uh, the men that went to work in a vineyard. Some went to work the whole day, and the others just showed up and just barely made it, and they got what everybody else got. Salvation is when you make it, you make it. You get what everybody else gets. And you know what that is? Save. So it's important for us to, to push this message. And this is a message of urgency. So it's not something we need to sit on. So with that being said, let me begin. When, when Christ told him to go out to be a witness for him, there, there are many ways to be a witness. And it, it, one, one of the, these many ways is through the internet, tracks, DVDs, CDs, books, music, uh, uh, food pantry, you know, like giving out food and, and reaching out to the, the poor and the needy. But there, there's another way, and that's inviting people to church. Now, now some of the, the scholars don't like to say that inviting people to church is a form of witnessing. They call it pre-witnessing, but they can say what they want to say. I'm saying it's witness. Look at your neighbor and say, it's witness. The reason why I say it's witnessing, when you invite a person to church, you plant the seed. And God brings forth increase. All I, all I have to do is sow a seed. It's not my responsibility to bring the increase. It's God. So if I, per, if I allow the opportunity to bring someone to church or to lead someone to Christ, whether they receive it or not, there's a reward in doing that. And so I'm saying it's a witness. And I'm going to tell you something. Everybody don't have time out of their lives to, to go around to... Walk, uh, go outside into these public places and pass our tracks, and especially with it being like seven, eight degrees outside. It's not like you're living in Florida. And so the one thing we can do is call someone or text someone or write someone and invite them to come out to fellowship. You never know, somebody might get saved, somebody might come to fellowship, somebody might have a relationship with the Lord that's been restored. And so inviting people to church is a, is a light form of witnessing. Uh, once I told you, it's called pre-witnessing. And many of us don't have the time to go out into the public uh, form of witness. Uh, but today, one of my requests to Christ Church is that, that we all begin to invite someone to church every Sunday. Amen. 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 There's no set number. I'm not going to tell you you need to have 10. If they don't have 10, don't count. Five, give me 50. 50, give me 60. No, just, just do it. And then I'm going to ask you the question is that in order to be a disciple, because this is about making disciples, that means you have to make new friends. And if I survey the congregation today and I was to ask you, when was the last time you made a new friend, it would tell me just how effective you've been in your discipleship. Now, how many of you made some new friends lately? That's pretty good. It's better than 8 o'clock, sir, but don't tell them, <laughs> but don't tell them I said that. <laughs> okay. So, so, so one thing that I want you to remember, we want to target a group of people in this fellowship. When I say invite people to church, the first people we want to target are unbelievers. You know, we not just keep asking the church to leave from your church to come on my church Sunday. We're not on some church crusade to get you just to join Christ church. We're trying to get you to join Jesus. Amen. And so the, 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 the foundation or the components of this that we are focusing on is one of soul winning and fellowship. Amen? Amen. And so with that being said, the target group is unbelievers and those who are without a church home. Like I said, we have not come to, to, to get you to, to do a crusade to join Christ's church, but it's to join Jesus. Our focus will be on soul winning and fellowship. The components of soul winning is the gospel, which is sound doctrine, that's, that, that's sound teaching, and love. Sound doctrine and loving heart pleases the Lord. And if you please the Lord, there will be increase. How many know that? Amen. 
You know, it's a story in the Bible about a woman who petitioned the Lord to heal her daughter, but she was a Phoenician woman. She wasn't a Jew. And she went before the Lord and she says, hey, Lord, Lord, have mercy on me. My daughter's back with demon. He said, but it's not meant to take the children's bread and to give it to the dogs. And what he meant by that was, it's not meant to take the bread or the blessings that I have for the children of Israel and give it to the Gentiles. Because the Gentiles was considered unbelievers. But the Bible says she worshipped him. Yeah. And once she worshipped him, he moved and he healed her. We need to let the unworld, the unchurched people understand that if you get to a place in your life where you can worship the Lord, there will be a blessing. Amen. If you can understand that this Jesus, this born of a virgin, is also the forgiver of sin, that he's a healer and a giver of eternal life. If we can let them know there's benefits in being in fellowship as opposed to not being in fellowship. There's more to gain in being in fellowship than being out of fellowship. I don't know about you. I may not be where I want to be, but I'm surely better than I used to be. So you got to understand, if you stay on the path, the Bible says, and be not weary and well-doing because a new season you will reap the root. If you faint not, you can't give up on this thing. And one thing I want you to know about this discipleship, never break your fellowship. Look at your neighbor and say, never break your fellowship. Never break your fellowship. Now, there's some things that we must remember when we invite people into our house. And you know, we have this little process where we want you to stand up and say, hey, tell us who you are, where you're from. But some people aren't comfortable with that. We know that some people feel a little, little uncomfortable, especially when you ask them to stand, not just to say anything in front of other people, but to stand up and say it. Then some people may dress a little different. Hello? I remember my former church home, if he was a little too short, they had these little shawls that they would bring out to the sisters. We had the, the seniors take these shawls to the sister, and oftentimes I'd be up in the pulpit, and I would look off, and I would see one of them leaving out. And like when they would bring that shawl to them, they're like, hey, that's not mine. Well, we said, you need to put this on. And some people took it well, but others didn't. And so if we're going to reach out to the unchurched, you got to expect some things from the unchurched to come into the house of the Lord. It's not like we lowering our standards, but we need to teach people about love and kindness and the way we're going to teach them about that if we show them love and kindness. If we want people to come to Jesus, and Jesus came with a message of love, a message of kindness, and a message of mercy, then surely our message must be the same. Therefore, we must show mercy, and we must show kindness, and we must show love. Amen. They may praise the Lord a different way from the way you praise Him, and then they may not praise the Lord at all. Well. Some of them might not be moved by when you move. They might not weep when you weep. They might not want to dance when you dance. But I'm telling you, if you're on fire for Jesus, and a true disciple is on fire for Jesus, and he's fully persuaded that if he do what the Lord asked him to do, the Lord will be pleased with him. And if the Lord is pleased with you, he will bless you. And if the Lord bless you, that means you can bless others because he don't give you something you can just keep for yourself. Our God is a God of relationship. And when he give me, I can give somebody else. You show kindness to me, I can show kindness to somebody else. You show forgiveness towards me, surely I can forgive someone else. So we, we don't want to overwhelm our guests. We don't want to give them too much to do. We don't want to give them a 10-point lesson. Hello? We don't want to preach so long they fall asleep on us either. Hello? <laughs> so our touch with them must be very sensitive. Our message cannot be some long, drawn-out message to put them to sleep where well, most of it they don't understand anyway. So for the most part, we want to keep it simple. If you want to be effective at ministry, remember this rule. Keep it simple. And so, our message is urgent. We can't delay. Can't delay. This, this is an urgent message. We should always be praying for increase in the kingdom of God. And I'm not talking about increasing your finance. You get a big car, a big house, and 
all the little tricks and stuff that they lure you in. Remember this. If they can lure you in, but what you already desire is not spiritual. Because the Bible says the spiritual things is foolishness to them. That's right. yeah. So if you are lured in what the world already wants, then it's not the gospel. This gospel is unnatural. It's spiritual. It's not the flesh. So your flesh is not satisfied with it. Your soul is. And the Bible says that what profit a man if he gain the world but loses his soul? You got to put some things in order. Your soul is worth more than silver and gold. Your soul is worth more because why? It's everlasting. It doesn't have an end. And I don't know about you, but the things that you can see, I know that they're temporary. Your good looks will pass away. Your money, your car, your body will break down. Eventually, you will die. You will give up the ghost. And you, you either go to be with the Lord or be away from the Lord. But anything that you can see is temporary. But the things of God are eternal. They are unseen. And we have to teach the world that it's not about what you can see, touch, and feel. There's a greater love, a greater deliverance, a greater victory. And it's in Christ Jesus. Yes, the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things pass away. Behold, all things are new. Yes. You got to let people know, you can be forgiven for your sins. Yes. You don't have to stay where you at. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of the Lord. All of us yes. have sinned. There's no one in here can say, I've never sinned. Yes. You might can say it, but you're lying, and then I'm going to have to see you after church. Because <laughs> it wouldn't be true. You can't come in here and say you didn't have no issues because you still got some issues. But the difference is your issues are covered with the blood of the Lamb. See, now you wear a red jacket instead of a stained black jacket with sin. Your jacket is red because why? You come to know who Jesus is. Yes, and since you come to know who Jesus is and your burdens have been removed and the yoke of your sin which separates you from God has been removed because Christ has offered himself up for a ransom, the just for the unjust, the righteous for the unrighteous. He came and gave himself as a living sacrifice, paid in full, the tomb is empty, he's seated at the right hand of the Father, soon to come again. The world has to know Jesus loves us so God gave his only begotten son. It's no greater love. It's greater than money. It's greater than fortune and fame and chariots and gold and houses and, 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 and movie stars and celebrities and all that foolishness that perish. Jesus is bigger than that. The Bible said the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. That means that everything that is in it. Look on the Drop some money. <laughs> that was a weird thing to happen right now. <laughs> see, when people come into church, they don't want to get drilled. Well, yeah, see, they, they don't want to keep getting told what they can't. See, they usually tell you the reason why they don't come to church because you can't do this and you can't do that and you can't do this and you can't do that. But you know what? Last time I read the Bible in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 10, it said the thief come to kill, steal, and destroy. But Christ said, I come that you may have life and may have it more abundantly. We got to change their thought. They, mis they misread the book. This book said Christ come that we may have life and may have it more abundantly. Not less life, but more life. I don't know about you, but I was listening to a, 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 a Bible teacher uh, this morning. It's about 5 or 6 o'clock on my way into service. And he says that he was the chaplain or is the chaplain for the Dallas Mavericks. And so they give him four tickets every year. I mean, every game, every home game. So he got four tickets. And so he can bring in whoever he want to bring. And wherever he go, they can go. And wherever he eat for free, they eat for free. He said, the reason why is because they connected to him. Yeah. Now, being connected to him, get him into a game and get free food. What do you think being connected to Jesus would be in your life? <laughs> um, yeah, just think about it. Now, I'm connected to Jesus. 
the King of glory, the Lord, strong and mighty, says, all power is given unto me. And let me explain something to you about this power thing here. When Christ say all power, he means I have all authority over the power. So you may have some power, but he's in charge of releasing the power. And the teacher I heard today, he used this example, and I want to use this. He says that it's just like a football team. The players are big and strong, and they have a, they're able to run real fast, and they run faster than the referees. But the referee can blow that whistle. <laughs> Bring it back. Yeah. <laughs> see, see, he said the referee can, can make you freeze. Your play is no good. It's a penalty now. Because why? The referee has the authority to exercise that power. As strong as you are, there's somebody bigger. Yeah. Hello? And so you need to understand the source of all our power, the source of all our strength, the source of our substance of who we are is in Christ Jesus. The Bible says in Colossians, you are completing him, for in him dwell the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He's fully God and fully man. The gospel have to go forth. And this is what we need to know. There is no other way. There is no name under heaven whereby man can be saved. But at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. Is that some light I'm drawn into? It's not Farrakhan and the late honorable Elijah Muhammad. Because if you go look for the late Elijah Muhammad, He's dead in the tomb. But if you go look for Jesus, three days, death was riding. But the Bible says he swallowed death up in victory. The tomb is empty. He is risen, and the Bible says he is alive, and he is alive forevermore. When you disciple someone, they come to know that Jesus is alive, and he's alive forevermore. Or what do it mean to disciple someone? I teach you the ways and the, and the things of God. And you don't just talk about them. And you don't just listen and hear about them. You do. Yeah. See, transformation comes by doing, not just by hearing. If you get information and it's not applied, it brings frustration. But information that's applied brings, brings transformation. So what you've learned about Jesus, if you start standing on it, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I'm not so bent out of shape when I'm faced with a problem. And, and to be absent from the body when the death angel visit my family, but to be in, is to be in the presence with the Lord. Death don't suck me up no more like that. Because I know to die in Christ is gain. And the Bible said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And in his presence is the fullness of joy. Oh, I learned that. I learned that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I learned that my enemies come to eat of my flesh, but they stumble and fail. You got to tell people when you walk in Jesus, you are walking in victory. Yes. Who can instruct the Lord? Who can give him counsel? Who can turn back his plan? There's none. There's only one God. And he said, besides me, there is no other. Nor will there ever be. So if you wait for somebody else to show up, you're going to be waiting. If you wait for somebody else to forgive you of your sins, you're going to be waiting. If you wait for somebody else to give you eternal life, you're going to be waiting. If you wait for somebody else to set you free from your blindness, you're better waiting for Jesus. Because there is no one else. When they say you got to make Jesus Lord, a true disciple know that Jesus is Lord. And they said, what do you mean when you're Lord? He's the head of my life. Huh? What else do you mean when you say Jesus is Lord? I'm saying he's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Revelation 19 and 6. When you say he is Lord, you sin. He is holy. And the Bible said, he is holy. Therefore, if we worship him, we must be holy. Our God is holy. He's above all other things. He's set apart. There's none like him, nor would there ever be. There's nobody that can love you like Jesus. There's nobody that can set you free like Jesus. Nobody can heal you like Jesus. Nobody can forgive you like Jesus. Nobody can give you the power to overcome the enemy like Jesus. There is none. 
He breaks the yoke and he destroys the work of the enemy. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the king of glory, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This gospel must go forth in love, forgiveness, and mercy. It's your ring to the heavens, queen. He said, all power is in his hand. All power. Somebody said, well, God had to give him power, therefore he's not God. God doesn't share his glory with another. <laughs> I told you when he brought the son and he said, and let the angels of God worship him. God doesn't share his glory. The reason why it was okay to give Jesus all the power, because Jesus is God in the flesh. Yeah. Some of you didn't know that. Some of you still think he's Mary baby in a little manger. Some of you think that Jesus only had a beginning when he was born in the manger, but before there was a manger, he said, let us create man in our image. Who is us? The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, yeah, so when you say Jesus is Lord, because the disciple know that Jesus is Lord, you say that he is the Savior of the world. Yes, Muhammad couldn't save you. Buddha couldn't save you. Uh, 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 Harry Krishna couldn't save you. So Young Moon couldn't save you. Elijah, oh, they couldn't save you, but Jesus came to set the captives free. I'm not who I used to be. Why? Well, because Jesus loved me like that. Yes, yes. He 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 put he changed my mind. He, picked me up and he healed me. He gave me a new way of thinking. I used to have a Daryl way of thinking. I wanted to do stuff my way. You know Frank Sinatra. He got real popular with that song. It was about my way, but Jesus showed me it was about his way. It's not about me. It's about him. He is who he is, and he's worthy to be praised, honored, and glory. There's none like Jesus. And he told me if I come to him, I better come to him for who he is first, not for what he's done, because he is King of glory, the Lord's hand. They say, your Jesus didn't really die for you. He wasn't a sacrifice. His blood was a shell. He died. He was resurrected. Over 500 people seen in 1 Corinthians 15 and 6. He is seated at the right hand of the Father of majesty. After he had purged us of our sin, he sat down on the right hand of majesty. And he would sit there until his enemies become his footstool. And the last enemy to be destroyed is death. 1 Corinthians 15 20. Death is the last one to go. And the Lord already has swallowed death up in victory. And so shall you. And we need to let people know, if you hang around long enough, you're going to get to be made new. I don't know about you, but I like new stuff. I told you I like a new suit. I like a new tie. I like new shoes. But he said, I'm going to make you new. Oh, so my knee, they, they told me I need to get my knee fixed up. Ain't got to worry about my knee. They got me taking a few medications. Thank the doctor over there. They got me some medicine to take. But they told me when you get to heaven, you don't have to take medicine. They told me when you get to heaven, you won't be weary no more. They told me when you get to heaven, you don't have to worry about rest. And he told me when you get to heaven that the wicked shall cease from troubling you. Oh, they need to know that it's a good thing. And some people look for the good thing right now. They don't worry about down the road. But I'm telling you, be more concerned about down the road than what's in front of you. If somebody came and told you, hey, we got a jet that's going to fly to Florida. But after 500 miles, it's going to crash. But the first 300, you're like, hey, hey, we're in first class. You only got 200 more good ones left. And it's a wrap. So... <laughs> If you got a crash waiting for you, it's because you practice sin. The Bible said the wages of sin is death. It has to be paid. Either you're going to pay it, or you're going to have to have Christ pay for you. Hello? So don't jump on the jet just to go 300 miles and then you got a crash coming. You need to understand that if you don't get this gospel out, some of your loved ones going to hell. You need to understand if you don't get this gospel, one of your daughters might be a prostitute, or your sons might be a dope fiend, or a murderer, or a thief, or a robber. If you don't get this gospel out, we shall suffer. Yeah, we can't sit on our hands now. The enemy is on every corner. Everywhere you go, some stupid shows up. I went to get some gas one day. These little boys looked like they wanted to rob me. I looked at them like, 
I'm the wrong guy, brother. I have no fear of you. I'm the wrong guy. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. There's some days I just ain't going for it. You ever, you ever just got tired of being tired? Let somebody else try that one on me and see what happens. You ever get to a place like that? See, I'm full of the Holy Spirit, so I have to kick that flesh out sometimes. But sometimes my flesh won't engage. Yeah, I'm just keeping it, keeping it real. Sometimes my flesh, I say, what was that you said, man? And then, uh, then, then that spirit comes and let me know I transform you. You got authority over that man that's calling you up. Well, how do you got authority? Because you quit feeding him like you used to. See, I used to feed that strong man, and he used to bind me up. He kept me in bondage, but I cut his dinner off, and he went on a diet, and he got weak, and then my spiritual man got strong, and I was able to put my foot on that fleshy man, and now my spirit dominates my flesh. You got to quit feeding your flesh. A disciple feeds his spirit to the glory of the Lord. They said, man, you crazy. Jesus ain't real. I said, you crazy. Yeah, you, you give all your money. You, I ain't begging for no money. You ain't seen no $100, $1,000 lines up in here. You ain't going to. Yeah. I'm preaching Christ crucified. There is no other way. You got to get to a point. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And then he goes to say, I am the resurrection. And there's only one way to the Father, and it's me. There's only one mediator between God and man, and his name is Jesus the Christ, the anointed one of the tribe of Judah, born in Bethlehem. That's his name. And get this, this is the sweet part I love about Jesus. Not only does he forgive sin, he said the Son of Man have power on earth to forgive sin, and that's an attribute that only God has. You can forgive a person that commits sin on you, but you can't Wipe their sin away. Christ said, I got power to wipe sin away. And then he goes on to say this. Not only do I have power to wipe sin away, I have power to forgive you and give you eternal life. Amen. You can't pay this bill. It's too much for you. You have trouble paying your phone bill. How are you going to pay for all that sin in your life? How are you going to pay for all the fornication and lying and cheating and drinking again? How are you going to pay for all of that? You're broke, you spent all your money on the foolish stuff. A riot is living. Somebody had to pay the price for you. You couldn't pay it yourself. Adam and Eve tried to pay the price for themselves. They ran and hid themselves with fig leaves. Honey, fig leaves can't save you. They had to be a shed in the blood. So he had to cover them with skins. And Christ, you couldn't be saved. And Christ couldn't die. Mary's baby was born to die. That you may be set free. He died that you may live. We don't come to church and not tell people about the goodness of Jesus. We don't want to offend you. Silver and gold have I not. But what I do have, I freely give. Christ Jesus is Lord forever. He is a deliverer, a healer, a strong tower, a pleasant help in the time of trouble. He's a bread of life. He's living water. He's a lily of the valley, the rose of Sharon. He's the ancient of days. He's the bright morning star. He is a way out of no way. He is a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. He is my fortress, my buckler, my strong tower. He is my king of glory and all oh, how I love Jesus. So he's going to prepare a place to where I am, where he is that I may be also. Why? Because you love me. We're going to meet him in the air. And he said, those who are went to sleep in Jesus, and that's referring to those who died believing, they're going to already be with him. Already worked out. So some of you might think that it's over, but it's not over. And I want you to remember this. If you don't tell somebody about Jesus, you're saying it's okay for them to go to hell. Yes. If you, if you can't call, I ain't telling you to go out and pass out tracks. And we got people doing that. But you know how to text. I seen y'all working them texts on your phone. 
Y'all y'all like master Texas. Text somebody to church. You're good at calling some people, maybe gossiping. Let's call somebody about coming to the Lord. And when they come to church, if they don't get saved that day, don't give up on them. Because the Lord didn't give up on you. The first time you heard that gospel, you didn't jump on that wagon. Hello? Some of us got all up in age before we wanted to do right. But I'm going to say, you don't have to wait till you get old to serve the Lord. You can serve him now. Our children can serve him now. Our grandkids can serve him right now. You got to be excited. You got to be walking as a witness for the Lord. Every chance you get, you need to spray the world with the gospel. They spraying you with this foolishness about this same-sex attraction and drugs and, and this, that, and the other. Can't we spray them about Jesus? And if they don't want to hear it, tell them to move. That's what you told me. We don't like your message. My message is a message of love. My message is for prostitutes and gamblers and thieves and robbers and drunkards and sinners and people who is against God. My message ain't for the well-to-do already who don't need a savior because last I checked, everybody need one. This message draws all nations, all tongues, and all kindreds. We got to teach people how to be disciples and disciples keep the Lord commandments. So we're going to get real about who we are. Let's start today. Amen. Amen. Don't wait till Sunday to call somebody. I was calling people 11 o'clock last night. Yeah. Call them today. Yeah. Tell them we got a service next Sunday. Yeah. Hope to see you there. Yeah. And when they come here, I expect them to be treated well. Amen. I expect when they leave here, they go, hey, it was a wonderful experience for me. You know, they don't have to be converted, but they say, they sure treated me nice. Yeah. It was kindness. I felt the love. And you know what else? They had some good food they served us, too. That food helped get you in, too. Hello? And so, <laughs> for my time has elapsed. But this is what my message is today, is that who have you invited to church lately? In order to, to uh, become a good disciple, you must be a person who can befriend people. And you must be able to make new friends. 